Mr. Jeff Gitlin from Jagged Edge Marketing, who's going to talk about uh, maximizing your Google business page here and the importance of doing so here, especially for real estate agents and the way Google is uh, displaying search at the local level here. Actually, they've been doing that probably now for the last five to six, seven years, uh, but now it's even more important to, to, to manage that. So, But before we get to Jeff, Ruth, what is happening in real estate? Well, it is a hot, hot market. I'm going to put you all in the lobby so everybody can see the screen and I'll bring you back. Whoops. What happened? Do, 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 do. Hang on, everybody. I'm going to hide you and show this. And now we got it. Thank you, everybody. So I am so excited because for the first time in over a month, we have 20 days of available inventory. We listed 201 homes yesterday, of which 69 were single family homes under 400,000. And we put 95 under contract. Uh, we closed 144 homes right on track with our average daily closing all this month of 145 homes. So I am just so jazzed. We have 2,523 single family homes available. Now, one of the things that's going on in our market, everybody, is million dollar homes are selling as fast as I've ever seen them sell. <clears throat> and what the uh, review journal said, let's put this up here. We have, uh, we have some records that we're setting. Um, so a, a Henderson estate dubbed the House of Water and located in the exclusive hillside community of Ascaya yesterday closed for $14.69 million. And it is the highest price paid for a single family home in this year and the third highest ever paid for a home in Las Vegas history. And it comes as we continue to hit record setting luxury sales in 2021. There was a newly built Blue Heron Showcase home in McDonald Highlands that listed for 28 million Guess what, everybody? It is under contract. And according to Rob Jensen, Rob Jensen uh, has his own company, Rob Jensen. He was one of, he started with our company years ago. So kudos to Rob. He tracks the luxury market. And he said this price on the uh, multiple listing service wasn't disclosed as to what it sold for. So, but we will see that soon. As soon as it closes escrow, then we are made uh, privy to the price of the home. So 56 sales of the 4 million and above single family houses in the, Valley, in the Valley have sold so far this year. And that's not counting the one recorded Thursday in Ascaya. So that's five more sales of $4 million and above that were recorded in all of 2020. There were 20 such sales in 2019, however. The Ascaya home measures 12,000 square feet and um, it belonged to a, a Stan Gribble, who was, um, I guess he was a, a multimillionaire, of course. Anyway, it has a swimming pool that measures 6,000 square feet. And I do have some pictures of it. Let's see here. Let me hide this a little bit. Go back down here. So you can see, look at this swimming pool. Oh my gosh. And it goes all the way back to the, to the, uh, all, all the way back to almost the uh, um, front of the house. Just amazing. Never, never seen anything like this. Um, and, and, I don't know. I don't recall. But look at this view. So so the water comes around the seating area where the fire pit is. And look at that view. You can see all of Las Vegas. It's absolutely incredible. Um, this is the kitchen. Beautiful kitchen. Huge, of course. And um, this home is just unbelievable. And that's what's going on in Vegas. Uh, 20, well, it's Excuse me, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that uh, $28 million home. Um, the other thing that's going on in Vegas, everybody, is um, see if we'll bring this up. So the governor has uh, given $8.9 million in tax abatement for eight companies bringing 2,000 jobs to our fair city. And um, I've listed those here, the Foot Locker Retails, Tapestry Inc., uh, TCP Global Corporation, uh, Warby Parker, Pitney Bowes, Spreetail, Sunshine Minting, 
uh, they mint coins, of course. And the one, let's see, there's one you can't see. It's called Fresh and Lean, and that's a, that's a food uh, company. So, I mean, things are roaring here in Vegas as usual, as usual. So I'm going to hide this, everybody, and take it away, Max. Yeah. What well, do you think of this market? It looks like the, uh, the inventory numbers are going up, though, right? I mean, yes. So, yes. yes. I mean, we saw, two, what, 201 listings? So that's, yes. that's good news. So hopefully, well, the reason uh, why people are selling is the amount of equity they're getting out of their homes because of the increased prices. I mean, if you bought a home in January, you could sell it now and make money and no, pay your co closing costs. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, when they start seeing their neighbors get you know prices that they never <laughs> dreamed of, like the the house that in my neighborhood that's smaller than mine that went up, that made my comp a hundred thousand dollars more just sold and closed yesterday. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy right now. So we'll probably yeah. see more listings because people are going to, uh, this is the law of economics, right? I mean, right. I start people see uh, their neighbors getting a, a unimaginable higher prices than they could ever see. They're going to start selling and then that will probably slow down the market just a little bit and stabilize it. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind it slowing down just a little bit here. Just this a is, little bit. I'll, this I'll show you this. Control. This is interesting. Let me show you this chart that uh, says, these are all this, the states with the green check marks are, uh, they have higher median prices than Las Vegas. So people are still going to come here to buy because, you know, our median price, uh, except for Tucson, Arizona, our median price is lower than uh, the top 10 cities that are selling in the United States. So mm -hmm. um, I think we're still going to have a, a bit of a booming market. Yeah, still good. Yeah, so get out there and market because eventually it, it the the tides will turn and we'll see a buyer's market at some point here. And yep. you know, don't get these realtors who are you know just <laughs> having only buyers only. Don't give up quite yet. This is the the wow. time to be diligent and and, and get your marketing and, out and, there. And that's why I wanted to bring Jeff back because uh, it's so important that agents get a presence on Google. Uh, what that's the largest search engine in the world, right, Jeff? It is. It yeah, is. It is. So uh, let's let's dive into Jeff here. And, and um, you know, you, you've been on the show before, but just in case, you know, uh, people are tuning in for the first time here, just give us a little bit of a background for you, Jeff, and, and what Jagged Edge Marketing is and what you do here and how you help realtors. I appreciate that. Thank you. And should we sell? Should I sell my house right now? By the way? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I wouldn't. <laughs> Not if you don't have another place already lined up. I know. And that's the problem is you sell the house, but then where do you go? Right? Because it's just well, Jeff, if you're selling it just for the money, that's the problem. But if you're selling it because you want to move up, move down, you know, retire, right. whenever that, those are the reasons why uh, so many people are listing now. It's not just for the money. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that the money's there so they can make the move they need. People, are, I mean, younger people are now having kids. The millennials are now having kids. They want a bigger place. They want a, a pet. A lot of reasons why, you know, the market's so hot. Yeah. But I wouldn't sell it just for the money because, like you said, what are you going to do? Yeah, and it's kind of hard to see a bubble hitting. I mean, it looks like yeah. it's just going to keep going. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's well, I think the expensive homes are going to continue to appreciate. And, and that's my opinion. Seems like it. It's almost like Vegas is part of LA County at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're what San Bernardino used to be. <laughs> right. right. We're just an extension. We're like a few exits past that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway, I appreciate you bringing me on. Thank you. My, my background actually I, is in marketing, but it was in marketing for myself. It was in marketing for my own businesses. I produced a, a, a show called Tony and Tina's Wedding on the Las Vegas Strip for 18 years. Um, I produced the second longest running show uh, off Broadway in off Broadway history, actually, um, and uh, produced shows in Hawaii and on cruise ships around the world. So I came from wow. the enter I came from the entertainment side of things. Um, so when you produce a show on the Las Vegas Strip, that means you're competing against Celine Dion and Cirque du Soleil mm -hmm. and people with right. uh, you know tens of millions of dollars of budget who are putting up billboards at airports and taxi tops and. The first day I, 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 I said to my general manager, literally the first day of operation, I said, so, uh, and, and I and I own the show, I hired the guy. I said, so what are we gonna do to get our word out there? He said, oh, well, we could buy some airport billboards and some taxi towns. I said, I don't think you understand. I don't have the budget. You got companies that are spending tens of millions of dollars on their advertising. I need a grassroots campaign. And, and I learned really early on, I better figure this out online because that's where everyone is, that's where to go. And this was yeah. over 20 years ago. And so I learned how to do marketing really to sell tickets for myself. That was the idea was how do you 
promote in a market where you're competing against Cirque du Soleil when you're competing as a Broadway producer? How do you compete against the biggest of the big productions? And so uh, learning online, learning Google, learning how all that works was, was really what my experience was. And I went into running a digital marketing agency because that was kind of a natural extension of, well, if I could do it for myself, I could do it for anyone and anything. Mm -hmm. Um, some niches and markets are harder than others. Some things take more time, but ultimately in the end, um, my belief is hitting on Google is the number one thing to do. Um, so that's just a quick, uh, a quick few seconds. Yeah. On, on who so I am. how did, how did that, all that experience, you know, migrate into the real estate world? Well, I, I met, I met Ruth and, and I, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing because learning ha Ruth has, Ruth is the greatest client because I've never seen anyone with so much content, right? I mean, I've never, I, what show is this? 500, like 571. Yeah. I, I mean, that's a tremendous amount of content. Um, it's highly unusual and it's, it's exciting for me because usually you have to say to a client, how do you, can you get me anything? Anything on you? <laughs> it's not really the case. <laughs> it's not really the case with Ruth. Um, but listen, real estate in Las Vegas, tough niche, right? It's a it's it's highly competitive. It's highly saturated. Um, we started a month and a half, couple months ago, and and literally started from scratch on 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 a brand new site. And uh, I'm I'm happy to see that there's a lot of activity going. I mean, the line is going straight up like this. It does take a little bit of time to you know to hit that, but um, where you're really hitting your stride and 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 the searching is coming in um, on an organic level. That's what I believe in. Um, but there's something called the map pack. And I kind of described this in the previous episode. I don't know if you want me to go into it again, Ruth, but um, maybe maybe they hit the high points of it. Yeah, well, the high points of it is is the map pack is so at the top of a search. So you have to understand how what happens in a Google search. So when you do a Google search at the top of the search, there's usually an ad or two or three, and it'll say it. it'll say advertisement, and then right underneath that is what's called the map pack, and the map pack is a highly coveted space. Uh, owned by Google, which when you search, and it could be for anything, if you search for dry cleaner near you or a restaurant near you or, right. or whatever it might be, gas station, it'll, it'll list the top three or four listings for what Google deems as the most valuable locality search for, for you. So if you search for something in Summerlin, you're going to get a different result than if you search for something in Henderson. Right? Because if you type in restaurant right. near me, you're going to get a different result. And so the locality of understanding how Google My Business works and Google My Business, I'm really referring to that map pack. Right. Those three or four listings are valuable because people stop searching after they get to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I looked the other day for you know a restaurant uh, near my you know my area wherever, and yeah, I, I just looked at the map pack and pretty much it and look. And I don't even scroll down past that anymore. I mean, and so I mean the habits. I mean, Google's obviously learning this, and so it's not about just getting your 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 page or whatever on the top of that that keyword, but getting it to the local business is what you're saying. Absolutely, it's 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 highly important. And sometimes you can get something called what's called position zero, which is actually a, mm. either above that or just having your own listing, um, and that that is insanely coveted, very hard to do, um, takes time. And it also depends on the size of the city and the niche that you're in. Um, but those are, those are valuable searches to be able to, to achieve. And once you get into that, then, then, you know, you're, you're really hitting your stride on, on making sure that people see who you are. So getting into the, into the map pack is really a strategy that I, that I like. It does take time. It doesn't just necessarily happen overnight, and there's some strategies to go with it. It's organically chosen by Google, mm -hmm. so you need to be you need to be relevant to what you, that search is. And I like to do it on a very localized level. Right. Um, so it's just a matter of knowing how to fill out that information and then promoting it. Yeah. So let's talk about that. And so I mean, if yeah. uh, if I'm a realtor or real estate agent, like let's say in you know, Centennial Hills or something like that. It even it goes localized to like communities. If you type in, in in those keywords, I mean, what are some of the things that people can do right now on the Google My Business page uh, to 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 make sure that they do things correctly and not just you know 
because I, I know for, I, I remember doing this like 10 years ago for like a company and you know, it was still kind of brand new. Uh-huh. And so we just filled it in as quickly as possible and then just like forgot about it. Right. So can you walk us through some of the key items and areas that you need to focus on to make sure that you, you, you build the right to, uh, um, I guess, uh, strategy to get sure eventually up to one of those two. Top Am two, I able to spots. share my street, my screen or. I don't think so. I think Ruth is the only one that can share her screen. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, you want me to bring something up? Uh, let's see. Well, if you were to go to, um, well, do you want to, do you want me to show how, how to properly fill out the Google, my business form? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. So let's go to, um, let's just go to Google and sign into a Google account. Okay. Uh, we haven't done this before everybody. So we're always trying new things. So I'm just going to go to Google. So google.com and then sign in to one of your, uh, you should be already signed in Ruth. If you're, if, if you don't yeah, log out, but what, what should I put in the search bar? Um, just type in Google. Google in the search bar. Yeah. I'm on Google. Okay. On the right hand side, there should be something that says sign in or I'm in. I'm okay. already signed in. Okay. So once you're signed in, you'll see the name of your, uh, if you all the way on the right hand side, there'll be a circle with the name of your account. And just to the left of that is like a nine digit keypad. Do you see that? Yeah, Hold on. Like, let me get there. looks like nine little squares. And right. if you click on it, it shows you all your Google services. Right. You want to bring, hide me down Ruth and bring that your screen up. So Hold on, that, let me see. Uh, I can't can, share my screen, right? Like, that yeah, unfortunately. No. Hold okay. on just a second. Share. Let's see. Come on, work, 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 work. Why won't it work? There we go. It should share, share, share. And then if I come back here. And you can drop me down too if that helps. So, uh, uh, go ahead and talk. And I'll solo this. Okay. And I think if I solo it, uh, everybody can hear us. We'll see. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So on the top right hand side, you'll see the nine, it looks like a nine digit keypad just next to the um, your agent formula symbol. Yep. So go ahead and click that. Click that. Okay. I'm clicking that. There you go. All right. Now scroll down. We're looking for something that says Google my business. Google my business. Sometimes it's in there and sometimes it's not. I haven't touched this account yet. So if, if it's not there, there it is. Oh, there yep, it is. There well, it is. it's my business. Is that yep. it? Yep. That's it. Click on it. Yep. Okay. So now this, this gives you the listing of, of all of your properties for that account. Now, by the way, I suggest if you have multiple, this is a, this is a tip for, uh, for anybody in any business, but if you have multiple locations for your business, you would want to do this in separate email accounts. So I see here that you have four verified businesses under this email account, Ruth? Yes. And like we've talked about in the future, if anything were to ever happen, um, you want to be careful so that if there's, and Google suspends constantly. This is, the, the, their, te their philosophy is, I would rather suspend you and have you ask to be reinstated than, uh, than not. So what they do is they go on this rampage of just suspending millions of businesses around the world. And for those that are legit, they have to then contact Google and say, Hey, you suspended me. I need a full, you know, reinstatement. Um, and it's because of that, that I like to separate my businesses out of that account. So that one Gmail account controls one Google, my business. So for whatever reason, Google decides to suspend the listing. You don't have an issue with the other ones getting suspended in the account. Um, but 
that being said, we do need to, I, I want to show how to, how to properly fill this out. So, sure. um, under, uh, and we'll just create a, a, a fake business just for the purposes of showing this. But if you want to go under the blue, I can't see it. I think it says add a business. Add business. Yeah. It's very hard to see. Does it say add a single business there? Add a single business. Okay, yeah. we did. Okay. I did that. Okay, so now this will be the screen. So if you're in your own account, if you're in your own Gmail account, and you need a Gmail account to do this, um, so it could be whatever Gmail account you use. It doesn't matter. That's not going to show up. Yeah, if you could in increase the size, that's great. Um, it could be a Gmail account. It can also be a uh, what's called a, a domain-based account. So let's say the name of your company is Agent Formula. So if it were info at agentformula.com, you could use that as well. And I can, I can explain either later today or on another call how to set up Google, you know, domain-based emails th through Google. But the, the point is, is that you want a separate email. So what happens is on the first page, you're going to get this, this listing, which shows Google My Business, find and manage your business. So here's where you would type in the name of your business. So let's just create a business called um, uh, Summerlin Real Estate Experts. Okay, and then you click that button right there. So that'll be the name of the company. And that name right there that you just typed in is what would show up under the listings when people are searching. So you have the name of the business and then there's the business category. So depending upon what the category is, you would enter it there. For this, we could do real estate agent, we could do property management. Um, there are over 4,100 categories in this section here. Um, and real estate has quite a few uh, different categories. I believe in selecting only one category. So real estate agents is fine. You can go ahead and select next. And when I say I like to select one category, I'll show you a place where you can add tons of them. And I prefer not to do that. So now this page says, do you want to add a location where customers can visit like a store or office? Now, uh, it depends. It depends who you are. If you're a real estate agent, most of the time, if you don't have an office, if you're working from your home, you're going to put no here. And that's going to be what's called a service-based business. If you put yes, that means that you're putting a location that's being published on Google where people can visit. So if you have an office where, like Ruth, you have an office here yes. you know, in, in Spring Valley, people would go to that office. But there's a lot of people that don't necessarily have that office that people don't want to visit. So if you if you have, for example, if you're working out of your home, and this is for a lot of businesses. Think about if you're a plumber. If you're a plumber, no one visits your office. Your office is probably your home, and you go and service people. If you're a pest control company, you're not having people come to visit you. You go to them. And so that's why people would select the no button. Now, all this means is that their actual address doesn't show up. It doesn't hurt your rankings. Google understands that there are millions of businesses that don't require an actual physical address to be shown. So Should we hit next. I would hit next there yeah, on on no. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're running out of time. <laughs> oh, okay. Where I'll, then I'll go quicker. Where do you serve your yeah. customers? Let me just put this. Let me just put this blunt. Put in one location. There are people, you can add hundreds of locations here. I put Summerlin. Yep. Looks like we've got it there. Click Oops. and move next, and that's it. Next. Okay. And here's where you're going to put in your contact phone number and your website. Okay. So this is how easy it is, right? It is. Next. And then you're going to enter in your address. Now, once you enter in this address, um, it is going to get you to one more page, which is going to ask for the name of the person that it should be sent to. So should I? OK, so we'll just do that. Uh, put in the state. OK. 
and then hit next. And I don't want you to hit, because obviously this was something we just created for here, but you would put in your name and then you would hit send. And once you've done that, once you hit that blue button there, a postcard will be sent to the address under that person's name, where it says mail there. Um, and within usually a week, Ruth, we have to figure out what our <laughs> issue is on a couple of our postcards. Yeah. Um, right. But within usually a week, four or five business days, a week or so, you will receive a postcard in the mail from Google, which has a verification code on it. It's like a five or six digit number. And all you do is log back into your Google account here and you click verify your address or verify the, with the code. So you type in the code and now you will have a verified Google My Business listing. Once you have that, once your account is verified, then there's a whole set of, of things that can be done to make the improvements for, uh, you know, for really optimization. So let's show this the search screen. Tell me what to search for so you can show people what you were talking about earlier. Um, just to search for anything, right? Yeah. So you're you're in California right now. So what what you search for will be well, search restaurant near me. Yeah. And so what you're talking about is down here is where you want to come up. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm not seeing your screen. Yeah, we're, we're not seeing the, the right screen, Ruth. You still oh. have the uh, Google My Business page up. That's weird. Oh, so it doesn't, it doesn't go over there. OK. I won't waste time doing that. But yeah. Well, you could just type over what, where we were before right. if you want. Well, I thought that's what I did. It didn't, uh, hang on. Let's try it again. So that's that's that seems pretty simple here, Jeff. I mean, it I didn't is. see anything very complicated in, in doing all that. So my next question is, once you do that, though, like what what are some of the high level strategies eventually to, to get ranked really high? So, again, depends on niche market mm -hmm. size. Um, okay. Well, let's but, let's let's take a look. Let's talk about real estate, you know, Summerlin, since we're on there, there's probably what? A thousand Summerlin agents, or maybe, <laughs> maybe five thousand. <laughs> there are a lot. There are a lot. So, and it takes time. This does not happen mm, overnight, right? Um, but there are a lot of strategies that go along with that, um, which I can explain in a second. But okay. let, let's just go back to Ruth. If you want to drop me and Max off, it's easier to see the screen there. So that's what's called the map pack. Restaurants mm. near me. If you were to type in. Um, uh, I'm trying to find something that would have an ad. Uh, type in, you know, uh, water damage near me. Because every listing is different. Um, people usually put up ads. Is that an ad? Okay, so do you see there where it's got, um, for things like property damage, it's a highly competitive um, niche. And they actually have verified companies i can't really see what it says there but usually there's you know there's like serve pro in there and things like that so they actually list for certain niches um pre-approved service providers and people pay for that so first you've got that section and then underneath that as you can see it says ads so you've got water damage cleanup experts all those three companies those those guys are paying for google ads then if you scroll down just a little bit more this is called the map pack, where you see a map and you see usually three listings. Um, what's actually interesting is, is uh, what part of uh, Southern California are you in right now, Ruth? Santa Barbara. Yeah, and look at the first listing that you see under um, water damage near me. You see something from Los Angeles. And, wow, the yeah. re and the reason why is because they've done an outstanding job at their location marketing in Santa Barbara. What's the next one under there? I'm curious. Another one Another from one LA. Los Angeles. Yeah. And the third one, Flood Rangers, unsure. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting to me about that is, is those listings have figured out how to come up in a search from Santa Barbara. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's a highly competitive marketplace as well. 
real estate is is too, but water damage is a big one. I just wanted to show this because this is what the what the Google My Business map pack looks like, and everyone's seen it, but I don't know if anyone has really thought about it or paid attention. But that's that's a very valuable piece of of digital real estate. Well, extremely valuable, especially if no, if no one's scrolling past the map pack anymore. Right. Uh, Right. I mean, <laughs> the map pack, like the first three, four, you know, it used to be, you know, if you're on the second page, you're dead. Now, if you're like the fourth, fifth listing, <laughs> I think you're out of business as well here. It, no, if you're on the first, I mean, I, I know what you mean. If you're on the first page, you're doing great. Um, and, and, and it's still highly competitive uh, real estate there, um, digital real estate, if you will. But the map pack is, is valuable, but it takes time. It does not happen overnight unless you're in a small market. If you're in a market with, you know, 10,000 person population. Like here, you're looking at Summerlin Homes for sale. What's interesting is, is I don't even see a map pack yet. Um, and the first major listings you see is Redfin, you see Trulia, you see, you're gonna see Zillow. Realtor.com, right. These are, these are big companies. I'm looking to see who the first Redfin, who's the first like local company? There, oh, that was up here. Um, Summerlin.com, KB Homes. Yeah, they're paying and, for those ads. See, it's his the, ad. Yeah, those are ads, Ruth. He, he's he's talking. Jeff's talking about the first organic. Uh, oh, like. Well, it's got to be, got to be Realtor.com, like you said. Is yeah, I'm looking. No at one local. The There's yeah. no one local. No one There's local no on the first page. The first one who comes up is. The Las, the Vegas, Las Vegas Luxury, Vegas Luxury Homes Pro. Pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah cold that's old, it. Cold old banker. So th this is, that indicates to me an extremely competitive marketplace. And, and it's not shocking. I mean, everyone would probably guess that. I, would it, how many, how many <laughs> companies are here in Vegas, Ruth? Thousands, right? Thousands, yeah. Thousands. So to get... To get well, look, there. there's 2,560,000 results just for Summerlin Homes for sale. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's com that's competition, everybody. <laughs> it is. Um, but like, if you were to type in, like, let's let's try to look at something. And and the real estate is valuable. So we're working on a website. I don't know if we can say. I guess we can say the website, right, Ruth? You don't care. Yeah. Fine. Um. So type in like. Um, I don't know, property management, Anthem, NV. Okay. Let's see what Property management. Up. Anthem, NV. NV. Okay, got it. All right, so let's see what comes up here. Now, you also have to remember is your search is interesting because you're not actually searching locally. You're searching from California. Yeah. Um, but So these companies here, these three companies that are there, are the highest locality search for property management in Anthem. Um, and so they've done something on their site, which we can take a look at, but they've done something on their site to, to really rank well in Anthem. Um, but if you scroll down a little bit more, let's just see if any, because I think we are starting to come up actually for location. Is. Oh, look at that. Wow, we're on the first page. Not only the first page, <laughs> you're the first listing. Wow. wow. <laughs> it's um, working. I love it when it works. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's hard to do because go all the way up to the top and see how many searches there are for that. 4,570,000. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're just a couple of weeks in. Now, the first listings you see there are ads, three ads, yeah. then the Google Map Pack. Then you have what's called feature. Oh yeah, the featured snippets isn't there. We're so we're. Oh yeah, so you got two locations, featured snippets, which is the people also ask, and then you. So I mean, that's that's pretty good after just a handful of weeks of. of I just launched that page a week ago. Wow, you know um, what you're doing. Yeah. So so give us give us some tips here, Jeff. You're keeping the uh, the audience here in suspense. What's what, what's <laughs> one or two strategies? You know, I, I know I know it takes time. You, you said that you know uh, multiple times. I know it takes time. Uh, so, but what do we need? You know, what what do realtors start needing to do? Can here? I tell you that? Can I tell you, Max, the number one thing? Yeah. 
Okay, the number one thing is content. All right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it actually if you've got if you've got competitor number one and they've got four hundred words on their page, and competitor number two has six hundred words on their page, and I have three thousand words on my page of relevant, good quality content. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, no, just, just three just, that. Just that. I mean, there right. are seven thousand other factors that that fall into ranking content, and content is so valuable, and so we we just pump out a ton of content to make that happen. That's the first thing I do, right? Mm -hmm. Then you got to go back in there, and um, and optimize for specifically for the area. There's things called location landing pages where you have, um, like for Anthem, I would have a, a page that talks about Anthem and Anthem Country Club and the elevation and things to do near Anthem. And then underneath that listing your services, property management, real estate services. And that really, really teaches Google how to, um, how to show your relevance to the area. Mm -hmm. um, and you do that for neighborhood pages. There's also lots of other things to do. You want to be able to enter a link to those pages. So I like to put on things called point of interest pages. So for example, and I'm not a, an expert in Anthem, but if you wanted to do you know, um, Anthem Country Club. So if you had a whole separate page on your website for Anthem Country Club that just talks about the golf course, right? With that page, when you link to the Anthem page of, of your real estate listing, you're giving more location, locality relevance to that page. It actually gives it significant value to Google. Google doesn't know who you are. I mean, the listing, you can kind of figure it out for some people. I love Las Vegas Realty. I'm guessing has something to do with Las Vegas Las Realty. Vegas, right. Right? But there's some company, ABC, you know, plumbing.com. Well, you wouldn't know what that is. But um, if you called it ruthallbrand.com, You'd have no idea what it is, but if it was RuthAlbrand.com slash property management Las Vegas, then suddenly you know that oh, okay, this is a property management Las Vegas company, and Ruth Albrand is the is the name of the company, right? And so, things that you have to do really is content, um, and then there's just a million things that go into it. And, and Ruth, I could take you here till about midnight if you wanted me to. <laughs> <laughs> you know. okay. So okay, let me let me break this down here so that you know uh, we don't move off the top. So first is content, and what you're specifically saying, and what I'm hearing you say is one: if you have a website, you got to make sure you have some type of relevant, you know, articles or pages that have words that talk about and using the keywords that you're you're trying to to rank for in those articles. But it has to be relevant, right? You can't just spam keywords into an article, and 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 because if I think Google takes into account like the length of time people are on your website and these pages too, to 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 you know to show the relevancy of it. And if they're just clicking off because you're just you know spamming your your keywords into you know a, a web page that makes absolutely no sense, it doesn't work. So I'm I'm hearing that is that is that the first thing I'm hearing? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You you have to have relevant content for what you're doing. Right, and I can, and I walked you through this on the last time, but we, but we can do this again. Mm -hmm. Ruth, do you want to go back onto the, that Google page? Sure. And so, while Ruth's doing that, I want to ask you a follow-up question. Now, does if, if you have a video, say, say for instance, I don't want to write. I'm not a writer, but you know, I can. I have the gift of gab, and I have a YouTube video, or I have a personal video. Will the video with the audio, with the keywords, with the relevant content, also work there, or or should you just transcribe everything underneath your video on that page? You can. Uh, helpful. Um, what's more helpful is so the number one. The first thing you said to me this morning, Ruth, is the or maybe you said it, Max. Uh, the number one search, the number one way to search is Google, right? They're the mm -hmm. largest search engine. Yeah. Well, guess who's number two? Yeah, YouTube. YouTube. And who owns YouTube? <laughs> Yeah, Google. Google. <laughs> Google. So when you embed a YouTube video onto your site, you're giving you're giving backlink relevance from YouTube to your site and from your site to YouTube. So you've got that interconnectivity as well. Um, there's tremendous value in that. And the more videos that you do, it starts to pile up where YouTube understands and Google understands, and you start to rank more and more and more for that kind of a content. Um, I like to put 
video on on my websites to the extent that I can. Um, for this one website that we're working on with Ruth, I'm actually posting every single one of these um, uh, webinars that she does onto the blog page. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually set that up as, a, as an auto uh, auto syndication. And once it hits the site there, I have it syndicating out. Ruth, I don't know if you've seen it. Have you taken a look at this at all lately? It's, no, I mean, you know, I do what yeah. I do. <laughs> it's been crazy. We have hundreds of websites now rebroadcasting, syndicating these, you know, all over onto big, onto big citation sites and what are called web 2.0 sites, which is a whole other conversation. Okay. Drop me and Max, Ruth. Let, let's just look at you. Know, you're saying, how do you come up with content? Okay. Here's a really good way. So Google gives, Google gives you a hint of how to do this. So when you type in property management, Anthem NV, now click, click the uh, cursor after NV. Okay. Why isn't it? Or maybe, just hit space. Yeah, hit a space. Hit, hit a space. Oh, okay. There you go. Let's restart this. Type. Start typing in property management. I'll just start over. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Look what starts to happen before you even do any, well, actually, it's interesting. Stop right there for a sec. Okay. It, it's very interesting because when was the last time on your computer you typed in Santa Barbara, property management, Santa? probably never, right? Or not never. recently. Right. But look what it's doing just from a locality standpoint. It knows where you are based on your IP address. And so okay. just by knowing where you are, it's actually bringing you relevant results to what it thinks is relevant for you. Ruth, my house just got hit by a golf ball. Oh no. Sell it. <laughs> 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 I literally just saw a golf ball hit the top of my roof right now. Oh my god! <laughs> All right. Oh my god! I, I can't stand being on the golf course. <laughs> that, that's a good reason to move. Uh, yeah. Oh god! I can't believe it. I have a, I'm sure I have a broken tile now. Okay, property management. Now it doesn't know that we're about to type in, you know, Anthem or Las Vegas, but it does show you what it believes is the most relevant. So I, I find that interesting. Now type in Anthem. Let's see what it does. NV, it may be two. Okay, so now, look what comes up here. So if you were to come, if you were to say, I wanna come up with content for property management Anthem NV, Google just gave you some very interesting results right off the bat. Maybe you never thought of property management and NV homes for sale. So click on the NV homes for sale one. Sure. Okay. And now scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. So this is giving you relevant results for Anthem. Now look what happens. Wow. Scroll, up a, scroll up a little bit there, just so we see those. <laughs> So do you see where it says relevant related searches? It's all the way at the bottom there. All the way at the bottom? Bottom yep. or top? Yes. Bottom? The bottom. Right there, related okay. Under searches. Under related searches, related look at searches. that. Now, if I'm writing, if I wanted to write 2,000 words of content, they just gave me eight categories to start with. Eight H2 Fantastic. titles. Anthem Henderson Envy Homes for Rent. Anthem Country Club Henderson Envy Homes for Rent. The bottom of there, New Homes, Anthem Henderson. Homes for Sale. These are all keywords. Del Webb Anthem Henderson. Sun City Anthem Henderson. So if you were to click on that, click on Homes for Sale in Henderson NV, you can do this all day. It tells you what to write. 21 million okay, results. So, now scroll down. so if you scroll down just a little bit, not too far, let's find the featured snippets if there is one. Keep going, keep going. 
this is how Max, how I I come up with my content. Keep going down a little bit. See where it says people also ask. Now, yes. if you click, if you click, okay, right there. By the way, I just came up with four more headings for my content. Where's the best place to live in Henderson? Is it expensive to live in Henderson? Is Henderson a good place to live? Now click on one of those, Ruth, and then click off, click on and then off of it. Watch what happened. Now, now click the arrow up. If you scroll down, it gave me three or four more results. Now wow. click another, click another one again, and click it back up. Now look, I've got another four more results. Click another one. There's your article. I know exactly the content I want to write just based on the featured snippets. And by the way, if you create content based on these, you know, is Henderson, Nevada a good place to retire? If that was a part of the section of the content that I wrote, if I write it in a smart way and know what I'm doing, I'm actually going to become listed as the featured snippet because when you see is when you click on that featured snippet, see right there, it's listing, um, I can't see there, something, Costello Management or something like that. Yes. That they are listed as the featured snippet. When you click on that, it's their website that's giving you that content. Wow, I see. Gee. Well, I certainly know why I hired you, Jeff, because <laughs> this is like it's exhausting. Going deeper and deeper and deeper. Oh no, it's a rabbit Amazing. hole. It's 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 literally it a is. golf course of 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 <laughs> you know gopher holes because there's so much it's there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things that have to be done to rank but just think about it if you do more a lot more than the next guy who's going to rank you or the, the other guy you yeah. you obviously if I, right there is your whole article on homes for sale in henderson that's the title of your blog homes for sale for henderson and I literally just came up with the H2s and H3s, which are the headings in that. And then you write the content on that. So I have a question. Yeah. In, in Agent Formula's website system, uh, people can create their own landing pages. So would you suggest that they do this to say, where is the best place to live in Henderson NV as the name of their landing page? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Cool. Hmm. I mean, you could you could create one blog with these as your as your headers H2s, in that right. blog, yeah. or you could take you could take the first one, "Where's the best place to live in Henderson," and write the entire blog just on "Where's the best place to live in Henderson" because it just told you where where to go, right? Mm -hmm. So you you yeah. can so you write about Boulder City, you write about Green Valley Ranch. You write about the livability there. You write about where its location is south of Highway 215. And then if you were to copy and paste best place to live in Henderson NV, you're going to come up with a whole other listing and other searches. And Google, I'm telling you, Google tells you, they're literally begging you. It's, it's like, what do they call it? Uh, hiding, hiding in plain, in plain sight. sight. Yeah. Hiding in plain so sight. If, <laughs> Ruth, copy just one. We'll just do this exercise for three more seconds. Copy "best place to live in Henderson NV" and type that into in the in yeah. search bar. Best yeah, place. best place to live. Is... Look at what it's coming up with. By the way, let's start to come up with. Now look at that before you even hit end. Oh, you hit enter. I hit under too quick. <laughs> it's okay. Hit the um. Go back next to NV and hit space bar. Um, I think Google just told me, based upon <laughs> what I just typed in, 10 things that we can write about. Best neighborhoods. The, and when I say write about, that doesn't have to be your header. But when you're writing an article and when you're writing a blog about best places to live in Henderson NV, in, my, in one of the sentences I'm going to say, um, one of the best neighborhoods to live in Henderson NV is <laughs> Green Valley Ranch. Right? Yeah. And that... And that keyword, by the way, now if you scroll down, look at that. People also ask. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom again, the related searches means that these are searches that, pe that Google is saving and saying people are searching for that right there. 
best neighborhoods in Las Vegas for families. That could be a heading. One of the best neighborhoods in Las Vegas for families is Henderson, Nevada. Henderson, Nevada has a lot to offer, including Green Valley Ranch. And here's a Henderson neighborhoods map to show you some of those locations. And then another part would say, one of the richest neighborhoods in Henderson, Nevada is Anthem. It is a, a spectacular golf course community uh, and truly is one of the best neighborhoods in Las Vegas to live. And I just incorporated like six of those <laughs> searches right into that sentence. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> and then you take two Tylenol and continue. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we got to have you back on again, Jeff, because uh, I'm sure there's more. I mean, we just, you know, we just. I haven't touched like, it. This is not Exactly. I've this is nothing. like the tip of the iceberg here. Right. You know, <laughs> uh, the content stuff, because we want to find out a little bit more, a little bit of the background. I, I like to see, you know, I like to ask you more questions about like, you know, what, what services that are out there to disseminate your content as well. Because I know backlinking is probably still relevant here, but, you know, it's it's. Not like it was back in ten, you know, ten years ago when you can do like phony websites with backlinks everywhere, but uh, actually real backlinks to to credible sources too is how it. Absolutely, you know, yeah. backlinking is very important. Right. I've done, I've had tremendous success using backlinking. I've also had tremendous success trying to not backlink. <laughs> okay. I want to, <laughs> you know, it's good to do experiments to see how that works. But my company does a lot of this. My company generates tremendous content. Um, there is a lot, lot, lot that goes into it. Um, and so I'm happy to talk to anybody if they have any questions for me, um, you know, to, to really understand it. It is, it is an art form to get to this. It takes years to learn all this nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah, a lot of trouble. You learn it. Exactly right. You, you learn it and then you systematize it so that you can uh, build a business around it. Right. right. So how, how can people, yeah. Bruce, do you have, do you have uh, Jeff's content or uh, contact information? Uh, available to scroll so that uh, if anybody's looking to, you know, get their business or website or, you know, their brand up on Google's uh, like map pack here and optimize What's it. Your so phone you show number, up. Jeff? Or do you yep. want an email address? Uh, email address is, is just as easy if people want. So okay, it's Jeff at jagged edge marketing.com. My initials are Jag J A G. Oh, nice. Uh, my name is That's my nice. name is Jeff, Jeffrey Edge. Com. Jagged Edge Marketing. Marketing. So that was that was how that came up. But here's what I would actually like to offer to any of the people that that you know, Ruth, that, that you send my way, um, is I'll do it for free. First of all, I'll take a look at your uh, at your Google My Business listing um, if you have one, and I'll help you on it because there's there's all kinds of problems that people don't even know where I can, I can shut a business down. I can change your hours of operation. I could say that you're permanently closed. I could be anybody and go online and do this. Mm. Um, wow. It is, it is a real problem, but for all the people that call me or, or contact me from you with all actually just write, you know, a, a couple thousand word piece of content. I'll have our team write a couple thousand word piece of content, totally free, just so you see what it looks like. Um, uh, just you know, and and you'll see how to be able to do this, and and uh, that may be a, a way that can help people out. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah. So it's That's Jeff right. at jaggededgemarketing.com, Everybody. It yeah. is. Yeah. And con yeah, contact us. We're uh, we we really have we really have a good system down. No, it do. looks like it. It looks like it. And Ruth can attest to it. So I mean, no. I could I could do this every week for weeks, just going through the next thing to do. <laughs> uh, we're, we might take you up on that. Yeah, uh, we might take Jeff, you up. Yeah, <laughs> just to build some more content. Right? I mean, this is pretty important here. You know, I mean, this is some of the basic stuff that, especially just the ranking on Google. People, I don't know. You know, there's a subset of marketing people that that feel like maybe you know ranking on Google is not that important anymore. But you know, people still use it. I mean, I still use it. In a pinch, you know, when you try to look for something right away and you want information right away, I mean. You, you're going to go to Google. So absolutely it's important to get your brand up there. So no, that, appreciate you know, the, next, the next look at the next time I'm on, I can show you how easy it is to screw with your competitor and that not to do that on purpose, but what they can do to you. Yeah, and so true. you actually have to protect yourself, you know? Um, and the one last thing I do want to say, and this is a whole other section and Ruth, we're going to get into this with you also in the next week or so is reviews. 
Yes. Reviews are probably the second most important thing behind content. Mm, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So um, I we actually manage one of uh, uh, Max's uh, investment properties, so he could give us a review. Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. Max, put some good keywords in there. <laughs> the best <laughs> property exactly. management company in Las right. Vegas. In Las and Vegas. Then, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, and I swear this is true, relevant keywords in reviews, Google picks up on. Oh, even better. Right. That's even yeah. better. All right. And then, Ruth, it's important for the business owner when they get a review is to then respond to it. Exactly. Yes. Comment. Thank them. If you comment on that and thank them, you also should put in your keyword that you want, <laughs> saying, you know, we've worked really hard to to be, you know, some the of the best top real property. estate agents in Las <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> okay, I swear it sounds crazy, but it works. It works. For sure. And I also know one other thing. You told me you can't do uh, a ton of reviews all at once, or you'll get suspended. It, it happens. What Google actually in the last week or two, they're not even, there's there's been a whole bunch of stuff online that they're not even posting reviews that are legit. Like, so you'll get a review for your company and Google will just hold it like in a queue. They're not even posting it. Um, so they think it's phony, spamming. Either yeah. phony or they, they go through updates, they go through all different kinds of, of um, changes and a lot of times, and this is, it's like a roller coaster. So it's constant throughout the year where they're doing this, they're doing that. I have heard that Google reviews have been absolutely paused for a big piece of the, you know, of, and the real estate, it's usually for spammy categories. When I say that, I mean like garage door repair and pest control and locksmith, stuff like that. Those are considered categories that are very spammy. And um, yeah. yeah, they shut down reviews. So, um, yeah. You have to do it though. You have to really push. And I actually have an, a, I'll, and I'd like to do this actually on the, on the next call is a fully automated review system, which we're going to get into Ruth. And I'm going to show this to you mm -hmm. where we can set it up so that we can feed in a database of names and phone numbers and emails of legitimate previous and current customers and people that you've serviced to be able to set up a, a massive drip campaign. I could probably get a, you know, depending on the size of a spreadsheet, you know, five to 10 five star reviews in a day or two and do that over the handful of weeks. And all you have to do is push a button. It creates a system where it texts people, it emails people, and you set, set it up over time and actually lead them directly into not only the Google um, review section, uh, but if, if they, if they give you a review less than the five stars that you want, it can actually be sent directly to your inbox and not actually go right to where uh, not online. So you can actually wow, auto filter. Cool. If someone gives you a one star review, you don't want that being posted online. What you really want to do is say, I'm really sorry you had a bad experience. Tell me about it. What can I do to improve that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so there's an- and That's great. That's an opportunity. I love those. Yeah, it's, it's an automated system to be able to filter out the negative. Now, if somebody goes to google.com and gives you a one-star review, there's nothing you can do about that, right? Um, I'm but, sorry to interrupt, Ruth, Jeff, I gotta get going. Yeah. I have a yeah, 10 o'clock appointment, so. I know. <laughs> uh, I will see you guys next week and okay. end the show, Ruth. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. You got Appreciate it. it. And uh, will you keep us hanging all the time? <laughs> we'll do it next time. <laughs> okay. Love it.